Welcome back. So let's just try and work with our new repositories up here. So let's just take an example first. Let's say we want to read all customers by ID right here. Uh, that's going to be my first example in my repository that I want to implement. And <clears throat> jumping into the new repository, I'll see there's a method right here. Of course there is, because I inherit, I use the iCustomer repository. So since I'm using that, implementing that, I actually have to have a read by ID. And that's why it's here. So we just need to change it now. Instead of actually not implement it, I should probably do something, right? So let's just look at the old code for reading something. And, and I'm just going to be lazy and copy everything over so you guys can see the difference between the two ways that we're doing it. So I'm just going to grab it, the old solution, and paste it into the new one and just comment it out for now, just to kind of, so you guys can map these two together if you want to. So in the old solution, we used the fake database and we got the customer. Now, because of this issue within memory, we had to clone each object. So we did that using the select statement and then we got the first default. We don't have to do that anymore because in the new solution, we don't have to clone because we are always getting a clean object because we're working with the data source that's from the outside of our application right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to return again like we did before and now we can say context. And for the context, notice the fake DB that kind of maps to the context in the old solution. And we can say dot customers on the fake DB. And because of the DB set we made, we can actually also say dot customers in the new solution, right? So I'll say dot customers, right? So nothing new here. And the last thing I'll do is I'll say, just like you're doing here, first a default, I'll actually use the, just to show you how easy it is, I'll use the exact same code. I'll just paste that in right here, first or default. And of course I need to kind of implement and you need to use queryable because this is not a normable link. This is actually queryable link. So I'll just use that one and there we go. Now we have a customer available. That's all we have to do. And notice how similar these two are. Let's also do the read all and then we'll end this lesson just to kind of show you how easy that actually is. So jumping back to my code right here, the repository, I'm going to find the read all. It says return fakedb.customers. So let's just paste in that old code and just comment it out so you guys have it available. What do we need to do? Well, I'm actually going to say return. And now the fake DB is the context again. And the customers are the customers. That's it. Exact same thing, right? They look so similar. Let's get rid of that. So now we actually return customers. Now the difference is, let's just, just for the fun of it, talk about the difference before we continue. The difference is that in the old solution, when you did this and when you did this, you just got a basic list because our fake database was just lists. So nothing happened except you just returned a list of items, a list of objects, right? But in the new database, whenever I do a command like this, behind the scenes what happens is it generates an SQL query. In this case, it would be select all from customers where ID equals and the number, right? It sends that to the database. The database somehow figures out what row in the customer's table to get by actually looking at the ID. It returns that guy back to us and it converts it from the SQL into actually being c -sharp objects right here. So we get a c -sharp object back. So there's a lot more work going on here, but the, the syntax of the code is exactly the same. So we just set up now for the read all and the read by ID. Next time, let's try and do the create. See you next time. Have fun.